Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to show you how you get started using Microsoft Project. So on the screen, I've got a blank file open. I've got my default setting down the bottom here, changed to auto scheduled, so that when I type a task, it will give me this sort of information there and a little icon on this Gantt chart view on the right hand side there. Now, basically you start off by typing your tasks. So if I go task A, for example, it automatically, when you've got it set to auto scheduled, gives you a start and finish date based on today's date. Duration says there one day with a question mark. Question mark means it's an estimated time. So if you just type one and press enter on that, it will go to a one day duration and that's you saying it's a one day duration. Let's just do a few tasks. Task B. Task C, task D, for example. Let's make all these one day. Now, when you do multiple repetitive things, what's going to happen when I press enter on this is it's going to ask me that I can pull this down or tell me I can pull this down. The planning wizard comes up. I'm, I'm not. You can knock this off, but I'm going to keep it on OK. So basically, what it's saying is that you can type it once. And similarly to what you can do in Excel, you can get that little black cross and pull it down and it will repeat that duration. Now, I want to add a summary task onto this. So at the top there, you've got tasks. I could have gone up there and inserted a task, but I'm going to click on summary. Now it's put it in the wrong place there and it's sort of given me all this sort of stepped indented task underneath it. What I need to do is move that to the top of this list. And I want to get rid of the second one because I can indent my own tasks that I've already typed to get rid of that. So this is how you get rid of a task. You highlight the whole row, right click and delete task. So now we've got a summary task there, which hasn't got anything on it. But uh, if I highlight these four, I can indent those underneath that summary task and then it becomes emboldened. And I'm just going to over type that with project A. Now, just to show you, I could have done that if I go project B here and then um, just to task A again for that one to show you a manual way of doing that, probably the way I'd normally do it. You just click there underneath that and then go indent and it does exactly the same. So whichever way you do it, it's up to you, but that's, what, that's how you do a summary task. I'm just going to delete those tasks off. Get them out of the way. So back to this. So now we've got some tasks. The detail that you put on this list is up to you, but remember you've got to admin this once it goes live. So you're just doing a task. This is your planning phase of your project. You've got the option now to link these together, which I am going to do. I'm just going to put the predecessor task number. So in this case, two in the predecessor column. So I'll just go two, three, four show you how that works two three four you get the little steps coming up on the gantt chart on the right there gantt is just the name of a bloke who allegedly invented this form of display now so they're all following on i could have highlighted those four if they're all follow ons and clicked on this little chain link at the top and it would just it repeats the process i'll just delete that off and show you what i mean so if they're all sequential which usually they're not you can click on that little chain link and it'll do it for you. Now on the Gantt chart itself, it's a bit spartan. You can't actually see what these tasks are, but if you sort of double click on the white area, you can come into this box, bar styles. One of the features in here is put the names on. At the moment, resource names are there. If you just over type that with the word name, which actually means task name, it will put the actual task names on the Gantt chart for you like that. So you can see what, what the things are. Now it didn't do it for the title, you would have to either double click on the title or when you go onto into this box, there's the summary task look. You'd have to select it like that and do exactly the same there if you want that also to show the name on the Gantt chart, which it now does, Project A. There it is all linked. Now what I want to do is come across, add some resources for these tasks. Now you can actually just type a resource name in there. And it will generate that resource onto the resource sheet, which is down here, resource sheet. I think the best way to do it is just to create your resource list and then select from it. 
Now you can see this is quite small. The font is quite small compared to this font that I've got on the Gantt chart. Now the reason for that is the defaults are 12, 12 points or 11 points, should I say, Calibra. If you want to change that, you can manually change it. But what the best way to do, I find, is if you go up to this resource sheet format option, you've got these styles, these two A's. If you go in there, you can quickly change the thing to, I'll go for 14. That's for everything. So everything should be 14. So everything becomes a lot bigger and easier to see. Now, if I just do a few resources, so I'll just do Bill, Ben, Bob, and Am. So these are work resources, and that's the default. You see they're default into work. Now, these people, if they're at 100%, that means they're available the whole time. 50% would be 50% of the time, etc., etc. I'll give them some wage, £10 an hour, £15 overtime. And then you can highlight those two. If everybody's on the same rate, you can just pull that down. If I can get the little black cross, there it is. Pull that down. And they're all on the same wage. Well, let's say Anne's a manager. You can do little groups here. So if I go trainer, that guy is a trainer. In fact, let's make all three of these guys trainers. If I can um, grab this little corner. It's flicking all the way on me. There we go. And then she's a manager. So let's give her some more money. She can earn £11 an hour. Now, you've got base calendars. Everybody's on the standard calendar, but you've got 24 and night shift as options. You can select, you can change the calendar if you want. You've got this code. If, you're, if you've got a cost code that you want to allocate, you can do that. Let's go for some equipment. So go for computers. And we'll go for Microsoft Office. Now, these are going to be material. I'll put them both to material. You don't get the option um, of a label for these work resources, but for material resources, you can put a label in there. That's what's going to appear on the Gantt chart. PCs and then MSO. And uh, let's put a price on there. So every time we use a computer, let's say it's going to cost us £50. Every time we use a license, it's also going to cost us £50. And then you can fill this in again, but don't put too much information in there. And I put Bill, Ben and Bob and all that sort of stuff. You could have put painters and it could have been like 300%. That would equate to three painters. Builders, 500%, five, five builders. If anything on this resource sheet goes red, you mean it means you've over allocated them on tasks and you've got to sort it out. You can't just leave it like that. If I go back to the Gantt chart and start allocating these people to tasks, now one way you can do it now, you've got the list there, look, where you can just tick these people on. But what I tend to do is go up to the resource tab at the top there, assign resources, because this box just floats. So whichever task I click on, it tells me there at the top where it, what it is. So it's just flicking between the ones. And then I could just assign people. So I'll assign Anne to that first task. And I'll give her a computer. And I'll give her one license. And there's a the cost. Coming down to the next one, I'm going to assign these two. Assign. I'm going to give them two licenses and two computers two PCs and then you can see the cost of that and the next one I'll just get Bob to do it sign Bob he don't need a computer and then the last one uh, I'll get Anne to do it again like that so then what you're looking for is that you haven't got any red flags flying up there that are like uh, indicators because those indicators mean that that person is over allocated now, if I break this link, for example, I'll just show you what that looks like. So now, task D is going on at the same time as task A. Hands on both of them. She's gone red. If I go back to the resource sheet, she's showing red on there as well. So you can't have any red men. You need to sort it out on the Gantt chart there. So I will undo that. There we go. Get it back. So now she's not over allocated. So that's the planning phase done. So what you now do is 
save the whole thing, the whole project as a baseline. So to do that, you go in up to project and you are setting the baseline. So a baseline is you're, you're setting your plan. This is what you think is going to happen. You've got the option of setting up 11 baselines altogether, including the first one throughout a project, but you don't have to set, set a baseline throughout a project. You can just have one. Click OK to that. And now you are ready to rock and roll. So basically now you're going to update all these tasks. What I tend to do is come off this altogether and go to, if I just go up to the top there, tasks, and get into a different view. So I'd go into the tracking Gantt view, which shows you the percentage complete, and the little charcoal marker is the actual baseline that you've just saved. And I'd also change the table part of this by just going to view and then selecting table and then cost. So it brings the cost table up. And that tells you what you have actually spent on this project or what you're planning to spend spend on this project up until this point. Now, the cost table, when you save a baseline, that column before you save a baseline is blanked. As soon as you save a baseline, it, it fills this column in. Now, to update the project, I wouldn't use this cost table. I would use the tracking table, which is further down here. Look, tracking. And that gives you some fields there that you can see. So what I would do there is I'd, I'd insert the baseline column. So if you go insert column, I just you want the baseline start date. So baseline start, and I want baseline finish. So I know what the actual the plan dates were. Now if you've got multiple baselines, that's a little bit difficult. You'll have to create, you'll have to create different tables, which is a different session. So I also want baseline duration. Cost duration, not baseline one, just baseline duration. So now I can see what I plan to do, and then this is how I would update things. So the first task A was meant to be one day. Let's say its actual duration was two days. As soon as I do that, it will fill in all the other information because I said it actually took two days. It's given the start date, it's given the finish date, 100% complete. You can see it moving off the plan straight away. If I say task B was also meant to be one day, but that became four days, but there's two days left, so immediately it went complete. But if I put two in remaining duration, you can see what happens here. It's going to flick back, and it's not complete, and it hasn't put the finish date in there. Task C, let's say that actually was meant to be one day, but let's say it was 0.5 of a day, half a day. Now, it still says I've got half a day left, but to indicate that you, you were ahead of schedule, you just put zero in there, and then that will go 100% complete, and that's pulled back a sl a slightly. Um, you've gained an extra five, uh, extra 0.5 of a day, although you've lost days up there because you can see that the actual movement off the plan on the, back, on the Gantt chart there. I'll leave the last one as it is when I started that, say. Now, while you're doing all of this, you go to the report tab and there are loads of preset reports that you can use. So you've got project overview. If I click on that one, it's just a simple report. It's, it's going to be adjusting as you update tasks. This will adjust to reflect whatever you do. So you've got multiple reports. If I go to resources, um, resource overview, you can see the planned resources. You've got actual work remaining work baseline work and things like that so baseline work was down here actual work's now gone up there and you've got still got work to do because those tasks are not complete some of those tasks are not complete i'll come back into onto the task sheet uh go back onto the gantt chart you can create your own reports you've got the ability to do that um and you can also export stuff into excel but that's just a very quick overview of microsoft project getting going what you should be doing keep it simple don't put everything down make it manageable and then it's a great tool to utilize so thank you for your time i'll catch you in the next one